Hello and welcome to an all new Max Chroma video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you a little bit about Separation Station, which is a free app I have available that can turn images which are already spot colors into separations for print. So let's just click on this button on my website, max-chroma.com. We'll do Screen Tone Duo, Spot Color, and Separation Station. What we'll do is go right here to this button on the bottom, which is Separation Station Download Offline App for All Platforms. It's really just a single page website. And so we can go right into the Downloads folder, and here it is. I'm going to actually uh, move this. I'll just cut and paste it over to this desktop. And I'm going to show you with some spot color tests. If you have an image that's already spot colors and it's not super large resolution, so you got to be careful about how many pixels. Like these ones are about 3,000 by 3,000 pixels. This image right here is 13,000 pixels. So this one's a little too high resolution to work through that app right now. But we'll be getting into some super high res stuff in just a minute. The uh, These spot color test files I just set up so that you can see if you have an image that's already in pixel perfect spot colors, you don't have to know how to use other applications like Illustrator and go in and click the colors around and change them and work with the objects. Or even if the colors are already set like this, like they're set to global swatches, it's a certain type of swatch, it's easy to change the colors of all the stuff in the art. You'd still have to know what you're doing in Illustrator and you'd have to know how to go and do that, right? And then if the colors aren't set like that, it's, it's not as easy. But you still have to go through and manually split each of the colors, make them black, make the others white. Or you could try to print. You could set each of these to spot colors and then print the separations from PD to PDF. There's certain things it's not going to do for you, which is make a choked underbase for all the seps. Or put registration marks around it all automatically unless you set those up for it. So instead of having to know vector programs like Illustrator or raster programs like Photoshop, or how to manipulate things manually. If the image is already basically spot colors, it just needs to be split apart, then you can go into separation station. So I'm just gonna double click that open and it, it runs offline so I can be in my own page here with the browser, it just uses the web browser to do it. But it's just a single page file, it runs offline. Now I can do choose file. Let's go and pick this one right here. And what happens is it comes into the view, but then it's scanning the file. It's looking for all the solid colors. And so if there's more than a, just a few, it's not going to work. This is meant for images that are already split to just solid colors. And so here we have the colors show up. And the first row of checkboxes is the colors we want in the separations. Each one's like a separate film. And then these ones are all checked. They'll combine together into our underbase white, or you could use a different color if you want. And then it'll apply a choke, a certain number of pixels. So what we want to do is actually for the colors row, we're going to uncheck the black. We don't want to print the black. That's our shirt color. And for the underbase, we'll do the same thing. We'll uncheck the, the black color for the underbase. We can go through and now set the choke amount. Maybe we want two pixel choke because this, uh, this was, I think, about 600 DPI when I output it. But you can essentially take an image even from Illustrator. That's what I did. I even in Illustrator, if you don't know how to do all this stuff, but it's vector artwork, okay, you can export it as a PNG file, and then you choose a resolution. Make sure the size is set for the image size you have. Make sure you have no anti-aliasing. And then when you export that, it'll produce that file, which has these pixel edges in it that are, instead of being vector, they've converted to these perfect edges, I mean, they're, they're not perfectly, they're not perfect lines, but they don't have any fuzzy pixels in between them. It's just either red or black, and it does this like stair-stepped effect to create the curve, right? But at the right resolution, when you put this on a screen, you're never going to see these little pixels and the emulsion on the screen. It's going to look like this. You're going to print it. It's going to look smoother. So what we do is just loading that type of image in automatically detects the colors, we just choose we don't want the black and the underbase or the colors. The underbase will now combine these four colors together and make it two pixel choke. It adds reg marks automatically, and we just do download separations. 
Okay, and if it's a larger image but it still runs, it may ask you to allow multiple files to download and to wait a minute while it processes. You don't want to tell it to cancel. So we'll do allow multiple files. We'll say wait. Okay, and so there we go. It produced the composite. It produced the underbase, and that's labeled here up in the top corner, and it choked it back. It produced the uh, different, uh, the white here, but these ones it just does RGB values. The white, the green, the uh, gold, and the red. Okay. If you want larger registration marks than that, see these ones right here? If you want them to be bigger, we can just choose large reg marks right here. And then do download again. Let me show you with a different example. Let's reset it. Choose file. Let's just pull in um, this one here. Okay, we don't want these colors there. We just want these three to be the colors, and we'll combine these to the underbase. We'll choke by one pixel. Let's do large reg marks. Download all separations allow the files. Okay. And so here's the composite. And there's the different separations. Okay, and the under base will be choked. And you see now the larger registration marks. So with these images, you still want to make sure when you print them to um, whoa, oh, 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 this printer is now loaded. Uh, We'll just pick this for now. Um, you just want to make sure that you don't have things change too much, that you want to pick the right size. You want to set this up and print to your uh, printer the right way. So sometimes you might want to load that in another print program um, and just send it to print. If, you, if you're not getting this to print exactly the right size you want to your film printer, you just need to make sure that that's set to the right size in some sort of um, program where you can adjust that. This isn't really setting in that separation station. It's not really setting any particular size. It's just working with the pixels you already have in the art. Um, there's pretty easy ways to do that if you want to make sure, but it doesn't always translate. So it's, it's almost better to open it up in the program you'd be printing directly from. Okay. You could still print it directly to your film printer from the, the photo viewer. I think you just got to choose that you'd want it to be a specific size. Don't do like the fit picture to frame. See how it's cutting out the reg marks like that. You just got to be careful when programs alter the size of it, they might introduce those fuzzy pixels if it changes it. So you got to just be careful about that one part when you print it. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this video. I wanted to just go over separation station and how it works with spot color images. And the purpose behind it is you can do things like you can convert the other stuff to halftones, or let's just go over one way to do an image. Let's, let's go to screen tone, solid spot colors, and we'll do the uh, offline app for all platforms. So you click here, and what you can do is um, set it up as a install right here. I think it might be that I already have it installed. Uh, we want to just do this. Uh, there we go. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's a little button will pop up here that says install. And yeah, so I don't need, didn't need to change anything about the settings. There we go. It was just taking a minute to load in. Okay. So when you're right here at screen tone, solid spot colors for version 1.0.1, .1, you can use this online the way it is, but I want you to see, you can download this and install it offline. So we'll do install, install screen tone solid spot. Now it's its own app offline. I can close that, minimize this, and you can see it installed right here. Okay. Let's go to load an image file or, hmm, how do I want to do this? I want to show you something that would work. Let's say you've got an image like this. Okay. Maybe I'll make the anti-aliased one that you wouldn't want to work with, but you can you can work with it still. So let's export as, let's just do fuzzy. 
I'll do 300 DPI. We'll do art super sampled. So it's anti alias. Okay. So now this one looks the same as the other one, but when we zoom in, you'll see these fuzzy pixels in between the colors. So this one's not pixel perfect. And let's compare it in separation station first. Let's open this up and get out of here. So we're in our own page. Okay. Choose file. If we do the fuzzy one, what you'll see happen is all these colors show up because now it's detecting all those different in between pixels. So you can't just split this one out, but you can if you bring it into spot color first. So let's go to our screen tone solid spot colors edition. Open the image file. We'll choose the fuzzy one. And let's go to the image tab, show source image. Let's do image size to 100% just so it doesn't automatically shrink it down. I've got that set just for a reason. Okay, let's just zoom out a bit. And it's set to six colors, but they're all just black and white. This one would probably work good with the auto detect. How many total are there? White, red, so one, two, three, and the green and the black. So five, so really let's set this down to five total colors. Auto detect colors. Cool, okay, so it picked the gold, the white, the black, the red, the green. What's happening is it's automatically taking the image on the left that's got those fuzzy pixels. Actually, I'll, I'll show you a different way to look at it. Let's zoom in here, scroll over this. Okay. Zoom in a lot so you can see it. Okay. Maybe even more. And what we'll do is we'll do image, show source image. Okay. If you're zoomed in a lot like this, you can make it so when you show source image, it, it's like over, it's like flipping the view, but you're looking at it like this. So you can click show source, unclick show, unclick show source. So you can see now the original show source image has got the fuzzy pixels there. Uncheck and it's now converted all of those into just solid pixel colors of red or black. Okay, and then the color space, you might want to change it. Sometimes it'll put, like it's putting green pixels in here, red pixels in there. You can try changing the color space to the RGB. It might fix some of that up, might make it worse. You could try HWB. Sometimes it fixes it. Depending between RGB and HWB, it's a little bit of a different way that it sees the colors. But honestly, when you just got those single pixels on the edge, it's not going to be a big deal. Well, I'll show you what happens. Okay, so show source image on the left. Here's this one on the right. But all we did was open the image. I'll, I'll, I'll reset it and show you. Let's close this down. Open up solid spot colors again. Image file. This fuzzy one. We want to go to image. Make sure we can see source image. The image size is default to 50%. So let's make sure we go back up to 100. And then we can go and... Just change the colors to five and do auto detect. There you go. If it wasn't auto detecting, okay, let's, let's just reset the custom palette to black and white. You can still click on each color, left click here, left click on the original, left click here, left click in the white, left click here, left click the red, left click here and left click the yellow click there and click the green. So I've set all the colors manually, right? But the auto detect worked pretty good. So all we need to do is go to export and we'll save it as a PNG, save file. And now we can go to the downloads. You can see that this fuzzy file has now saved. And like I was saying, it's all pixel perfect now. But of course there are a couple of red and green pixels on the edge of that gold, some red pixels on the edge of the white, but don't worry about those pixels. When you go to burn screens, most of the time those aren't even going to show up. And you can also just tape them off if they show up. This is all about what's the easiest thing for someone without the background experience to just jump in and start doing. And also for free. These are free apps I've made and I've made them for free because I think this stuff should be free. It shouldn't be difficult. These programs like Adobe have been doing this stuff for 20 years, 30 years or more. And they haven't made this simple process as easy as it can be. 
So I'm here to make it easier for you. I'm here to make it something that have the tools that we should have. Then let's get into the advanced stuff that those applications can't get even close to doing, but we can try to make that stuff automated too. Let's go to uh, separation station, choose file, and we're going to load in the one from the downloads that we fixed. Here we are. And so we took even a file that's anti-aliased edges and we've converted to spot colors, brought it in here. Now we can just uncheck the black from the colors in the base. Let's choose large reg marks. Let's just do download all separations. Allow multiple files. Okay. So there we go. Converted it into the choked under base and the different separations. And so like I was telling to you, you've got this right here coming from that anti-aliased version of the art. It split out like for the green, but then it saw some of these green pixels along the edges right there, right? But what I want you to see is from the perspective of someone's experience and skills, you can print this on film and you can easily go through here and you could just tape these off once you make the screen, even if these showed up. A lot of times, these are not going to rinse out. When you burn the screen, you expose it. The exposure goes around this little stuff. It cures it. And it's like you could either cut it out with an X-Acto from the film. You could tape it off the screen once. If you burn it, expose it, it shows up on the screen. There's a lot of things you can do physically that you know how to do already that you wouldn't know how to do on the computer, right? You have to go in the computer now and digitally know all these tools to edit things. So I'm taking things from 25 or more years as a graphic designer in these print fields and all these other industries for like screen print and uh, paper printing, poster printing, all this stuff and the graphic design skills and experience I've developed up. But what I'm trying to develop is things that make it so anybody can do this stuff without the computer and graphics background. You know, we're at the point now where the AI can generate artwork and images uh, just with the, the, you know, a text prompt, right? And that stuff is truly amazing. I wish I had this stuff 25 years ago, okay? It's production art. This is commercial art. We're not talking about fine art that you make on your own from hand. This is commercial art and production art, and there's a reason why automation is involved. The, the businesses out there, honestly, the businesses, they're not concerned about you as an artist, they're concerned about making money. So it just isn't, those are two totally different things the way I see it. With production and automation, I'm all about how much we can automate that the human doesn't have to actually do. And then what are the things that we can have the human involved in and make even more amazing automations when you manually control things, right? And I'm all about the precision side of stuff, the perfection of things. But from the basis of people just doing production art and commercial art and trying to print things and all that stuff. If you're even just into the screen printing side, you're not really into maybe all the art and everything. You want to get into the printing. You shouldn't have to know all that stuff. You should be able to take images, go right to screens and start printing them. Now, this video was focusing on how spot color stuff is, especially if the image already has perfect pixels of just those few colors. It's ready to go, and I've made these free applications just to make that easy. I'm going to go over it another time here with Separation Station. I'm going to choose a file. Let's go to the, uh, the desktop. I've got that spot color test. Let's do this one right here. Okay, and the, uh, the background we're not going to use, so just uncheck that. And here's an interesting thing. When you see two colors show up that look like they're the same, but you want to make, you don't want these to be separate colors. Pretty easy to merge them. I've set it up. So what we'll do is pick color from canvas that sets up a crosshair. We can click on that. Now that we have this color set, we're going to left click there and say swap. Just in case those were different, we'll left click here and say swap. Okay. Now we'll do clear colors and count and force colors again. And there they show up with, I, I merged those two together. I, I swapped the one with the other. And that's all done right in this app here, okay? Um, so let's uncheck the blue and we'll make the base out of those four. We'll have those four be the colors. 
choke one pixel, maybe even choke two pixels, and la large reg marks if I want, download all separations. Allow the multiple files to download. And we can see in our downloads folder, there it is. Very cool. Okay. From the other side of things, I showed you if you have an image that's got the fuzzy pixels in it. And let's say you have an image that doesn't have any of that kind of spot color stuff, right? Let's pick one of these AI images. Like maybe this shark would be a good one to test. So I'll go into Screen Tone Solid Spot. Let's close it out and start it up again just so you see. Starting up Screen Tone Solid Spot Edition. Image file. I'm going to go to those AI images, this shark right here. And I'm going to set it maybe, uh, let's do image size first. Make sure it's at 100%. I just have that default in case people are loading images way too big. And let's set this to, um, let's just see what it looks like when we do two colors, auto detect. There, it's like, oh, you could do this out of blue and cyan. A lot of times people come to you with artwork, you should be able to quickly show them spot color or other versions that are in one, two, three, four colors, etc. So here's three colors, auto detect. Maybe I want the pink instead. I'll click, left click that, left click there. So this could be in the, the coral pink color, the navy on a light blue shirt. Let's go to four colors and I, I could left click this and click that light color. Or we could, let's set the palette back to black and white and see if we had it as four and do auto detect. There we go, it auto detected those. So even though this image has a lot of these gradients and, and a lot of details, it's it's got a lot of fuzzy pixels in it. Let me, um, let me close this. Let's look at that shark image. Where are we? Okay. So if you look at this image zoomed in, I'm gonna load it up in the photo viewer. So we can see this has just got tons of different pixel colors, right? This is not spot colors, but from a distance, it looks like it kind of could be, right? And that's the point of this application is you can take any image in and see what it would look like as just those spot colors and choose the ones you want. So let's just try those three over the background. Export, PNG, save as. Let's just close this now. Let's open up, uh, let me just close all this so you can see. You don't have the internet running at all, right? We're going to just double click separation station. We're gonna do choose file. Once it loads up. We'll go to the downloads where I had that file, double click this. Here we are. There's the, the colors that are in the image now. It's only made out of those. Uncheck that background. So these three will be the colors. Those three will be combined into the under base. So the one pixel choke, add reg marks, download all separations. It's really that easy when you have the right tools set together for things to function. And I'm gonna be teaching you how to make these tools. This is not some sort of mysterious thing I'm trying to be like, oh, it's magic. We don't know how it works. It's a new tool. This is something where it's, it's, this is easy stuff. This is stuff that is at the fundamental level of image processing. And we don't need Adobe or any of those corporations. We don't need any special guru or magic. You know, this is uh, even experience. You don't need the experience. You just need the tools that work with the image data a specific way. And so once you have those tools, we can really be liberated to just go right into the screens and start printing on films. So let's just go to this downloads and here we are. Oh, you know what's interesting? This one, we might not have wanted to print the Navy in the underbase, right? That's a thing I just missed right there when doing it. Let's open this up. And so the cool part is you didn't waste a bunch of time doing the steps the wrong way, right? You just, oops, I needed them to be differently. So let's go back into this image and we will uncheck those and we'll also uncheck the navy from the base so we want the underbase only made out of these light colors and we'll print this navy right on the blue shirt color and let's do one pixel choke add reg marks this is also the artwork is actually lower res so what happens is the pixel choke is already a little bit too much but let's just download the steps and see it 
oh yeah, allow multiple files to download. You could probably set that in your browser settings to automatically do it. Okay, there we go. So now here's the underbase, the colors. Okay, so I'm going to conclude this video here. We're going to show you a lot more stuff on those free things. And the other software I have is really when you want to make things into blending halftones together out of the artwork and not just converted image into solid spot colors. But thanks for watching this video. Um, you know, subscribe if you want to get notifications about more videos. Um, like the video if you like it. But, you know, I'm not doing the YouTube channel as something where I, I don't make any money off of the YouTube channel. It's not a monetized channel. There's not a lot of, of uh, subscribers and viewers. I think it's a lot of subscribers. I'm really grateful for what's happening with this project. But I really don't like the ads right now. One of the, one of the issues I've got going on is that I don't monetize the channel. I don't really want ads to play on my videos, but YouTube puts the ads on anyway because they're monetizing the content no matter what. So what I'm so on my website I do have the watch or download legacy archive videos. I'm trying to organize this better. I need to make it not alphabetical, set up some video buttons with the thumbnails and set it up just kind of like my YouTube page. These are, you can download these videos, right? And um, right there, download it. I'm gonna set all the new videos I'm making onto this page also and let you guys watch them and download them without any ads playing because I'm not doing this for the YouTube channel or for YouTube at all. I'm doing this to give you guys uh, the information, the knowledge and the tools. And you shouldn't have to skip through ads for any reason, I think. Um, but yeah, we'll take it from there and we can keep working on this stuff more and more. So thanks for watching, subscribing and being a fan, a follower or a supporter, anything you've invested in me through the products and tools, very appreciative. And we're gonna just keep going with this. So. Thanks. We'll see you in the next video.